If you're scared of getting hacked, make your password something really embarrassing to say, like underwear. So then if someone hacks you, you can be like, oh my God, you just said underwear. Welcome to SC Cyber Safe. I'm Emmanuel. So what we do here is we teach online safety, digital safety, and also expose all the latest scams and tricks used by scammers here in Nigeria and all around the world. So in today's video, I'm just going to be doing a basic reaction video on some cyber safety videos I saw on TikTok and some other social media platforms. So this is the first one. Did you know that Facebook secretly spies on everything you do? Facebook finds a way to target and monitor everything we do so they can usually give our data to third party applications or third party websites to market to us products that we might most likely buy because they've gotten our data, they know what we search for and they know what we they know the apps we use, you know the websites we visit. As long as you have that Facebook application on your phone or as long as you use Facebook and you've agreed to their terms and service which nobody bothers to read you have agreed to all these things so it's not new but let's continue the video i will show you something in the end i did a video relating to um this facebook privacy stuff you can check the link in the description after this video you will see the video you can just go ahead and watch it and see what i said about in the video here's how to find out what it knows about you and tell it to stop spying on you from the facebook menu go to settings and privacy then to settings then look for off facebook activity and go to manage your off Facebook activity. And as you can see, Facebook sees every site and app I visit. Ridiculous. Not only that, but it also sees documents I read and even the bank I use. Very ridiculous. Now, how do, do you tell Facebook to stop following you? First, click on clear history. Then, go to the three dots from the top and go to manage future activity. Go to manage future activity again and turn off future off Facebook activity. Now you'll be able to sleep better knowing that Facebook doesn't spy on you anymore. Well, I don't totally agree with that. Facebook will still continue to spy on you no matter what, as long as you use their platform or if you've used it before. The only way you can at least reduce it is if you stop using their platform entirely. Because if you notice, there's a part in the video where he said you can go ahead and clear history. They already have all these things in, the, in their database. They know the sites you visit. They know the social media platforms you use. So they can easily just target advertisements to you and then give these details to some third party applications like they usually do. They will even tell you in their terms of service that they do give out some of these details, but not your personal details, but some of the um, your behavioral pattern on Facebook. So and then what you search about, they give these things to third party application as a way for them to make money and so on so you can entirely go private once you use facebook but soon enough in a video i'll explain the difference between public privacy and private privacy i think we should be concerned more about private privacy and as long as i'm concerned facebook is what they call public privacy which might not really be something you should disturb yourself more, um, about so let's just move to the next video do, 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 do. Check this out. Area has the highest theft in the world. Maybe don't walk around with all that cash. Oh, really? Oh, well. So if really you've ever done personal banking on public Wi-Fi, you've taken the same risk. If using public Wi-Fi, make sure you have the correct Wi-Fi name. Avoid accessing personal information, and if possible, use a hotspot and trusted VPN service. If you want to access your bank details or your bank application or whatever, do not use public Wi-Fi because hackers already know how to um, just, there's all the call man in the middle attack. Hackers know how to just attack those particular Wi-Fi or those particular public Wi-Fi and then they start saving information or start gathering information from um, what you do. So there's a way they intercept traffic on public Wi-Fi, especially if it's being monitored by the hackers. So it is not safe if you want to um do anything related to your bank or any transaction that that might require some funds or something like that make sure you use your own wi-fi or a safe wi-fi that you know the source and it's also advisable to use a vpn a vpn will also help you in tunneling the traffic like you said and then keep you safe in general from the hackers getting your information so vpn is very important if you must use a public wi-fi but i don't i don't um i don't approve using public wi-fi to do anything related to your bank or to your um to your financial any financial services or any financial thing like e-commerce websites i've spoken about this in so many of my videos you can just use public wi-fi to update apps and just basic things but anything that requires your phones or it's not just advisable except you have a vpn 
So let's watch the next one. This is a friendly PSA about emails that look like that. Beware. It comes from Google Drive and it tells you that your files have been successfully published and then you're supposed to click there. Do not click there. It's not safe. Warn your friends and family about this. So this one is actually very funny. Yeah, you might receive emails like this. This is what they call a phishing email. If you've been watching our videos, you know this is what they call phishing email where you get um, someone sends you, it might be a hacker or a scammer that sends you a particular email pretending to be from a reputable organization or a reputable platform like this one. This one is um, OneDrive. Okay, this one is Google Drive. It could be OneDrive, could be Dropbox. They use it most times. They tell you that you either need to update it or it has been hacked and you just need to click on a particular button on that email and then access it. If you do that, the moment you do that, you've gotten hacked or you get yourself hacked. So um, I think I will start a series on how to detect phishing emails so that we we'll just one on one will be able to look at a particular email and then we'll answer it together to know if it is a phishing email. I think that way we'll be able to detect phishing emails or phishing emails faster. I think that's what I'll do. I'll do that in, um, in ne my next series or in next series, which I'll do. Make sure you stay tuned for that. So at this point, if you are new and you are still watching, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I already told you what we do on this channel. So let's move to the next video. Can you get hacked if you respond to calls from weird numbers? This guy again. You absolutely can. If you receive calls from numbers starting with plus 375, 90, 92 or 09, don't answer them. Uh, at this point, you said if you receive calls from these numbers, you should not answer them. Uh, I wouldn't totally agree with that because um, some of these numbers are actually legitimate numbers of people trying to reach out to you but um one thing is one thing is fishy if if these numbers should call you and maybe you don't have them as part of your contact you just need to be careful about the information you give out but the thing with these numbers is that or the reason why he's saying you should not pick or you should not pick a call from these numbers is because most of these numbers you know if you don't know by now there's a way people buy or purchase temporary numbers online where you can just um, get numbers for the sake of maybe scamming people or or just reaching out to some people. So most scammers always try purchasing all these um, temporary phone numbers online, and these are the common um, prefix of those numbers. I had one time that a scammer contacted me using one of these, I, I guess it's one of these numbers, I'm not entirely sure. And then the scammer tried to scam me, but eventually, obviously, I caused the person. So I blocked the person. And then I noticed that Instagram, not Instagram, sorry, Telegram notified me that that particular number, because it was on WhatsApp, this happened with that number. Then on Telegram, it notified me that another person joined Telegram using that same number. And I had already saved it as a hacker or a scammer, not a hacker. So when he told me that the scammer had joined Telegram or just joined Telegram, I confronted the guy and he said that he just bought the temporary number on online that he's not that he was not the person that tried scamming me blah 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 and obviously i had to investigate for that and he was not the one he just got the temporary number online to do something i don't know what purpose he was using it for but let's just continue watching the video if you answer them the attackers will be able to automatically clone your sim and even hack your bank account most importantly do not call these numbers back if you call them back they will instantly steal your financial information and even your money. In fact, don't answer and don't call back any number with an international prefix that you don't know. So at this point, you said something about, um, it's, it's called SIM swapping basically. So um, it's saying that if you pick calls from this number, you could get your financial information and all. What this is saying is that um, it has happened so many times. It's what they call SIM swapping. If you don't know what SIM swapping is, it's, the way it happens is that a malicious actor, who they call a scammer or a hacker, whatever you might call it, might call um, your customer care representative and then try to get your number as their own. They will try to swap their, your number as their own. So what they will do is that they will say something like, um, I've misplaced my number and I need to change it. I need to change this number and then swap it to this SIM. So what your customer service to do is just basically social engineering. They're trying to trick your customer care representative to swap your number from your SIM card to their own SIM card. And so what they'll do most times, the customer care will 
try to ask some certain personal questions which these people must have gathered through information gathering either the details you leave on social media or the details they've gathered so far about you so this might be easy questions such as date of birth um some basic security questions so they might just do that and then get your sim and the thing the way they can withdraw money from your account or the way they can clear your bank account is if they already have um if they if they've already been given access to that particular number if they've swapped the number you know most people use um two-factor authentication people use their sim card or their phone numbers to as a means of doing two-factor authentication or as a means to receive what they call otp you might know that one so these people will receive your otp so any otp that goes to your bank or any otp relating to any financial thing you do they will receive that otp on that their particular sim card and they'll be, using, they'll be able to use it to withdraw your money so um to stay safe from sim swapping basically it's advisable to use um you can use your email as a way to receive otp or as a way of um verification second step verification or you can use all these authentication applications like google authenticator or 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 OT, there are different types of authentication um, applications you could use to receive OTP or as a as a means of two-step verification. So you don't need to use your phone number, but most mostly you'll be safe. It, it doesn't really happen much because now people are getting people are aware of it. But I don't think answering calls from those numbers will pose harm to you, except you give them any information that you're not supposed to give them. So just be careful. Once you receive calls from those numbers you just answering it won't really do anything except you give them some information so that's just it so before i move to the next video if you found this useful or if you found value so far in what you've been watching please go ahead and click the like button go ahead and just smash the like button so let's continue i'm really sorry i don't have anything funny this morning i am really angry and i'm about to tell you why Excuse me, but some sick son of a bitch who sings somewhere in a basement with a laptop and thinks he's the smartest guy on freaking earth hacked into my daughter's old Snapchat account last night, took pictures where she's wearing a sports bra and shorts, put sensor bars over them and made it look like she is naked in them. Then he messaged her friends and her and said, Ridiculous. if you don't send me $50 each of you, I'm going to leak these naked pics of her. We know they're not naked pics. I've seen those pictures. I'm not worried about that. But here's where the problem comes in. This person who I assume is a grown man somewhere is sending my daughter our address to let her know that he has it and he knows where we live. That's slightly terrifying to her. She's very uncomfortable. Here's where your problem comes in, sir. Have you never met an angry mother? So because there's this nothing one is, more this one is than typical. That. Do you get to see nothing. this ones often when um, hackers or why do I keep using? Why do I keep saying hackers or scammers? Well, they are almost the same. But this is when someone or a malicious actor. This is when someone tries contacting you that they have some of your compromising pictures or videos or intimate pictures or videos, and then they are going to expose it online. So this was a case of you heard this whole story. I did a video on sextortion. This is what they, this is what they call sextortion: sexual um, online sexual blackmail. So um, I did a video on it. I do, it was even a live stream. So you can just go. The link will also be in the description below. You can go ahead and watch it. How to deal with sextortion. How to prevent it from happening. Sometimes, aside the major sextortion, there's what they call extortion where or sextortion emails. You can go ahead and watch the video. I explained it extensively. What sextortion is all about. The, the video was basically even titled "All About Sextortion." So you can go ahead and watch it. So this person is really, um, <laughs> the mother is really angry and the mother can um, go extra lengths to protect her child. But just for kids to be safe or for your kids to be safe, I don't know whoever is watching this, but um, there are certain things you need to also take note of in terms of your kids' online safety. I also have a video, all the videos I'm talking about will be in the description below. I have a video on how to keep your kids safe online. So I think all these things are preventable and the way to react to this kind of thing. Um, so let's move to the next video. Here's a website that everybody should be going to every couple of months. It's called HaveIBeenPwned.com. It's a website that allows you to check whether or not your personal data has been compromised by data breaches. So basically you put your email in, it checks all of the websites that have been compromised and lets you know whether or not it has been. So what do you do if you find out that your email has been compromised? Make sure you change all your passwords. A lot of people usually have their accounts affiliated with each other one way or another, whether it be shared passwords, shared security questions, or shared something. 
Step two, start converting all of your accounts to two-factor authentication. All that is, is just another layer of protection. So if you log in, you can say, oh yes, that's me on my phone. So it'll be slightly more difficult to break into your account. Share this with everyone you know. The sooner you find out, the better. Uh, so this particular video is very interesting and very, very informative. I think I've, I've done things like this if you've watched our videos. Okay, so what this person is trying to say is, um, he said every month you should try visiting this particular website. This particular website, what it does is that you put in your email and it tells you if your password has been exposed in any recent um, data breach, either from Facebook, from Twitter, because most times all these social media platforms always have data breaches one or twice, just free, uh, not frequently, but um, seldomly they have these data breaches that could expose your data, your password, and some of all those other things. So it's saying to know if your if your passwords are somewhere online that you should just type in your email there in that particular website have i been pwned.com so once you put in your email it will tell you if your details have been breached your that's your email and your password if it has been exposed or majorly your email so um what i do not agree with is it says monthly well you can check monthly though if you don't do the basic online safety stuff you can check monthly but what i noticed about that particular website is that even after you check and then notice that you have been breached in one of these um, data breaches and you change your password to that particular email account they don't kind of update it they don't update it so it, even if you check two months or three months later you will still see that that your account is still registered as, or is still tagged as um a breached account or a breached um or your details being breached so they don't really update it so what i would say you can go ahead and check if your email has been um, breached or if your password has been breached and if it has go ahead and change the password to that account every account associated with that email and then um he said the second thing to enable two-step verification it is very important i always sing this i wish i could just sing it but i don't think i have a good voice though but I wish I could sing it so that people will get to understand the essence of enabling two-step verification or two-factor verification or, or, or authentication. It's just um, a, step, a second step of insecurity that could help you secure your accounts or prevent people from anybody, anybody that has your password basically won't be able to go to the next stage so just like you having two steps of security for example you have a house you have your main gate aside your main gate being logged which is your password if someone could get through your main gate the person shouldn't be able to enter your house because of your door which is locked so that's it but if the person passes your main gate which is your password and then you have your door open that is not having the two-factor authentication setup it means your door is open the person could just go ahead and enter you should always enable two-factor authentication on all social media platforms that are available that has two-factor authentication available i think all social media platform now has that um, two-factor authentication enabled in the settings you can just go ahead and check settings you will find it it's not difficult to find but um the places you might not see two-step verification is in websites when you have to log in to a website or create an account on your website um, those ones really don't have two-step verification so um that's why you need to use different passwords in case things like that happen so um, let's move to the next video. If you use one password, please keep on watching because this comment came in today and it needs to be addressed. So if you use one password for everything, please stop doing that. Instead, use a password manager that manages your passwords for you. The main ones I use is LastPass and Apple has one as well. I'm not going to lie to you right now. And I don't know any of my passwords, but I do know it's going to be very hard to crack. The reason why you don't want to use one password for everything because you don't want this to happen. Well, let's say you use your one password for your email, your banking, your games, your other and your OnlyFans account. If someone finds this password they have access to all of this and if your passwords are different you cannot use the same password to get into other accounts so this one is quite explanatory do not use one password for all your accounts i know some people are fond of this though they they are like i can't i can't remember so many passwords i just have to use so many i just have to use one password across any different any platform so some people any website that registering any new social media accounts that are using the same password and what happens like he explained is that the moment your account is the moment your password is gotten no matter how strong it is it might be very strong or it might be as long as 20 characters but once it is gotten that is the end they will have access to all your social media platforms and they can cause damage lots of damage 
So um, it's advisable to use different passwords across so different social media platforms. But if you are like me, that have that if you are like me, that is on over um, should I say thirty different social media platforms, not necessarily social media platforms, but I know I have um, thirty different accounts where I needed to put passwords, including social media and websites. I can't, you can't possibly remember 30 different passwords. It's going to be very ridiculous. And sometimes writing it down might not be safe. It might be safe if you can keep it in a place that you know nobody else will get it. But if someone can have access to a written down password, it's not safe. And please do not write your passwords down on your computer on your phone, because if it is hacked, it can, um, a hacker can have access to it. So the best solution to this is to use what they call a password manager. So what the password manager does is basically it's um you just require one strong password and I, I, there will also be a video about how to create strong password so you can just have one password remember a strong password should have four different characters that's the the lower case the upper case the special characters and then numbers so if your password if you just need one strong password with those characters and then it's just like locking other passwords in a vault so that's what that's what password manager does. You just need to know the master password to unlock the password manager, and then you'll be able to see your other accounts. And sometimes it helps you to fill in your details in some forms. It has your name and everything. So password managers are really good. Perhaps I'll do a review on the channel so that you know the best password managers to use. To some are very affordable. You could use Google password manager. There's password manager that Google has, but I don't really. I, Google is kind of tricky, so I don't really like Google. But I could recommend some you could use. They are quite affordable. The, the reason most people don't get to use these things, they feel like the subscriptions to these things are very expensive, that they can't keep up with the subscriptions. But if you take a good look at it, some people use Netflix, some people are subscribed to Netflix. So if you could be subscribed to Netflix, how about just getting a password manager? It's actually very cheap to um, have your details in, or it's actually very cheap to have a password manager. That's just the basic truth. It's very cheap to have a password manager. And there are some that allow you to use it for free. As some password managers you can use for free. You don't need to pay for it. You just need to download the applications and go ahead and use it. The only thing is that um, you might not have some extra features like VPN. Some password managers have what they call VPNs, that's virtual private network. Um, they have some, some other features like this too, like antivirus and all. So you might not have those other features if, if you are not using the paid version. So the paid version is better and it is very affordable. So I'll do a video reviewing that or you can check the description for the one I use if you want to um, get the one I personally use. So let's move to the next video. Let's see. Cyber safety tip. If you're scared of getting hacked, make your password something really embarrassing to say, like underwear. So then if someone hacks you, you can be like, oh my God, you just said underwear. Huh. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I think this one is probably a joke because this is like the most ridiculous thing I've heard. Please, please and please. Uh, maybe I think it should just be a joke because I don't think, please and please do not use the password as simple as that. Do not use um, words, do not use basic dictionary words as your password, like maybe underwear or underpants or, tra or trousers, whatever ridiculous thing. As long as those words could be found in a dictionary, as long as those words are things that you could easily say, please do not, even if they are slangs or whatever, do not use them as your passwords. I told you how strong your password is or how to have a strong password. You can check the video also in the description. Please do not use, hackers don't care. They will say the other way and they will still hack you and then get whatever they want from you, mostly your finances. So um, this, this particular video is, I think is a joke. So let's just move to the next one. <laughs> Did you know that your phone can quietly make money for someone else without you even knowing? This happens with the help of a virus that gets installed on your phone you click on virus online advertise yeah so at this point the person is very right 100 percent right i for those that have been following us for, for those that are subscribed or for those that watch the video because i know not everyone watches the videos um you must have heard me say something about adwares or spywares what are this is talking about adwares basically adwares are types of malicious softwares that either monitor you monitor what you do or they send, start sending out to your phone uncontrollably. 
they start sending ads to your phone they monitor the websites you visit so they just know what to market to you so that is one and then um some of this pile some of these adwords also they help they make money for like he was explaining they make money for the person that created those adwords for example they they could just be mining bitcoin with your phone so you notice that your battery is reducing and um your phone is getting hot and you just see that some of the applications are just getting enabled by themselves so let's just watch the video you will hear further what he has to say once installed this virus uses your phone to mine bitcoin and make money for someone else without you knowing symptoms of this virus include your phone overheating or slowing down so make sure to avoid clicking on suspicious online advertisements yeah he said make sure to avoid clicking on suspicious online advertisements so you might be wondering how does someone click on suspicious online advertisements well if you are the type of person that downloads um, pirated movies or downloads movies from all these movies websites and series websites yeah you will most likely see lots and lots of it there because have you know ever have you wondered why um or how come you just get to download movies and series for free like what are they gaining actually the people that uploaded those videos and series there what are they gaining actually or is it just for free they're not gaining any money so what these people do is they put lots of ads on that particular website so that some ads are malicious some are not so you could just click on what they call an adware and once you click on it it starts sending you those ads it, it monitors everything it gathers your information basically so that's what it does so visiting those sites that you download free movies and um, free series and all those things are really not safe and this is the medium where most people fall into this particular trap that this um this person is talking about so um if you see any particular online advertisement always make sure you investigate properly before clicking on it look carefully i've already explained all of this by now so let's move to the next one what to do if someone hacks your social media account first of all most social media accounts including facebook or instagram will give you all the information you need to go to the police and press charges and what's more cool is that from your social media account if you go to settings and then to security you will be able to even get the ip address of the device the hacker used to hack your account so you'll be able to get the location of the hacker. That means that if you go to the police with this information, they will even be able to identify the hacker and arrest him. And if you press charges, the hacker can even go to prison for um, several years. So I would say this particular video is in two parts and I would agree with one part and then wouldn't agree with the second part. The part I would agree with is where he said that um, if someone hacks your account, you can, they will surely give you details of, they'll give you details of the person that hacked it. Um, a bit, it might not really be the details of the person that hacked it, but you will see something like your account has been logged in on this device in this IP address. So you might see something like, the um, accounts that like especially for google account you see that a device maybe a, 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 a an iphone this 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 um logged into your account at so so time they will put the time that the person logs into your account and then they will also put the ip address so some of these social media platforms do that when there's a when there's an unauthorized login to your to your account or when there's a login to your account that might seem strange maybe, that, maybe from a different device so the, the the only thing is that most times anybody that is hacking your device or any hacker that is hacking your device would always have a vpn and a vpn can change the ip address so ip address is just like your house address let's put it like that but it's your online house address okay let me just put it that way so that's what an ip address is everyone has an ip address as long as you are online and you are using, and you are using a device your ip address is just like okay this is your location this is your home address online so hackers know how to use vpn to change ip address so if i'm here in nigeria i can use a vpn and then it's just like teleportation i can make myself look like i'm in the united states or in canada or in us or in india or in any country i want to i just need to select the country i want so um the ip address they might have might be a wrong one and then he said reporting to the police the police might did i say might the police won't do anything in this case because most times they don't have any business with um account was hacked and or it's not their jurisdiction so if your account was hacked you have to find a way to meet professionals to help you um recover it or that's all it's not something well for nigeria it's not something that um um 
the Nigerian police. <laughs> you can't even be Nigerian police for that. So I want you to comment below in the comment section. Do American police, um, would American police listen to someone that his account was hacked? Maybe you meet the police that someone hacked your social media account. Will they listen to the person or will they help you out in any way? But I doubt 100% because they have time. They have. Um, they don't have time for that. I'm sure they, they have better things in terms of security rather than that. Except maybe cyber police. I don't know if they have that in in the United States or any other country. So um, let's just continue. Said so the hacker can go to prison for several years. Um, it's, it does not happen. The only way hackers can go to prison for several years is all these top hackers, and that's if they are caught. Like the top hackers that target top organizations and governments and all those things those ones are the ones that can they don't have time for petty hackers and script kiddies and all these people that hack social media accounts nobody has time for those ones if you fall for them it's they will just see it as it's your fault for not um being online safe or online aware or conscious so they don't usually have time for that so no nobody's going to prison for hacking your account so you just need to protect yourself by yourself so i think let's see if we have do we have any other video this is Rob Ross. One night he had a random notification on his phone that he had a withdrawal request from one of his banks. The next morning when he woke up he had just found out he had lost one million dollars. And the cause of this was a very new and common type of theft called sim swapping. It's when a hacker tricks a customer service representative to give them ownership of a victim's phone number. And they use the phone number to get into their bank accounts. And the hacker was Nick Shrublia, who was 21 years old at the time and living a lavish lifestyle. He got caught, but Rob never got his money back. You can prevent this from happening to you by using your email to recover your passwords, not your phone number, and by not reusing your passwords. Follow for more tips. Yeah, so I've explained how SIM swapping works. If you want me to go in details how SIM swapping works, you can go ahead and comment below and I'll do maybe a special video on how SIM swapping works. But I think um, in so many of my videos, I touched on what SIM swapping is. So um, you can see how much that person lost and the person never recovered it back. So that's the only thing. So if someone hacks you and maybe steals your one million naira or your one million dollars or whatever amount of money, the only thing that can happen is that the person gets caught. So that's if at all the person gets caught. The reason this person was caught is because it was a huge sum and he was and he attacked someone big or a big pers a personality. If it's someone just um, an average person, nobody cares actually. So. What this person is saying is that you need to protect your your details by yourself. You need to be online um, safety aware by yourself. Like if you lose your money, you've lost it. They will not say okay because they arrested this person. This person should bring it back. They can try and recover the little the person that the person still has, but most times all these people that scam or all these people that hack will just use the money for something else. They will they will um, trade your money for something else or they will spend the whole money because you know they will still get another one. So you won't you won't in most cases recover anything back. So that's why I say you need to be preventive in the first place. Prevention is better than cure. So that's what this particular video is saying. And uh, so please and please do not click off at this point. Please do not click off at this point. You need to know everything about online safety. Just put it this way. Um, online safety is everybody's business. For you to be safe online, it's just like your basic physical safety where you have to lock your doors, you have to know, okay, you're not supposed to go out at night. Just the way you take your physical safety or the way you, you want to know about physical safety is the way you should take your cyber safety as long as you're doing so many things online. The things that could happen if you're ignorant of this or if you don't care about your cyber safety is that one, you could lose your funds. For those that feel they don't have funds or they don't have money to lose at all, because that's the mentality some people have, especially in Nigeria, that, oh, they don't have funds that scammers will take, so what are they taking? One thing is that your details are really important. They can use your details to put you in trouble, to impersonate you. And so when they use your details to impersonate you, they can use your details to scam someone, they can use your details to hack someone, and then they will make it, they will pin it to you. So once they pin it to you, it's just you won't be able to say anything because you can't defend yourself at this point you even be shocked how it happened but they use your details there's a way they carry someone's details and then the hackers use someone's details in person the person so they will arrest you or they will do whatever they want to do to you so there are so many ways um there's another one too you can also um 
lose your 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 should i say your online identity or in a way that imagine they have your they hack you and then they get something like your nude photos or something that way they will be able to they have leverage on you basically and then if they expose those things online it just tarnishes your image it makes you mentally unstable it spoils your likely your likelihood of getting jobs because you have your nudes online and everything so it just it tarnishes your image in general the the online or should i say the cyber world is a very beautiful place because you, it makes life easy but in the same way it could be dangerous so most good things also have their bad um their bad sides so i guess that's all for this video do well to go and watch every video that i've talked about in the description or you can go ahead and enjoy the playlist which we have for you in the comment section go ahead and also ask and then give contributions on any of these reactions any part that you feel or you need to ask questions go ahead and ask this is supposed to be a community where we discuss and um, talk uh, talk together. So if you, I can even consider doing a live stream where we just get to talk and ask um, and ask questions. I know most times on this channel, I just go ahead and dish out information. We don't go, we don't get to just um, gist or talk um, personally. So, but we can do that if you want it. So just go ahead and let me know in the description. So thank you for watching this video. Remember to stay safe. Your online safety or your cyber safety is key. Stay safe.